Okay, so yes, welcome everyone to Meet Meets Mark Olivier de Plod. Uh, I'm gonna start by sharing my uh, screen and introducing the webinar series. Um, starting with our fabulous jingle made by Chicks on Speed. Let's see if I'm gonna find it. More meat, less meat, speed. They will teach you not to bite me. More meat, less meat. Uh, so what more meat, less meat, speed. I will teach you not to bite me. Oh. Oh, no. Yes. It was so good you had to hear it twice. Uh, so uh, welcome to Meet Meets. Uh, this is a webinar series organized by the Norwegian Research Council Founded Project Mitigation towards sustainable meat use in Norwegian food practices for climate mitigation. Um, today, we will hear from Marc-Olivier Deplod on scaling up pig farming, livestock buildings as instruments for the rationalization of pig farms in 1970s France. A little bit about mitigation. Uh, we are a transdisciplinary climate research project uh, funded as mentioned by the Norwegian Research Council uh, we're joining social science expertise, humanities and arts, as well as uh, expertise in nutrition uh, with farming, restaurants and uh, provisioning actors. Uh, usually um, these would be uh, business actors, uh, though we also have a restaurant that is a folk kitchen as well, or what we might consider under that branch. And we also are collaborating with climate communication and cultural actors. So the museums in South Trondelag, and we are actually right now having an exhibition open in Trondheim in Norway uh, called More Meat, Less Meat. And uh, you can find more information on our website about that. And also, of course, you should come visit us if uh, maybe you're not so concerned with the climate uh, uh, impact of the flying, if you're not in Norway. Well, um, our project is structured around exploring three R's, three principles we have specified for uh, sustainable meat use. And that would be recognizing the animals and the people that are involved, who are involved in making meat, uh, replacing where possible animal-based protein with other uh, proteins, plant-based proteins, perhaps insects or other uh, lower climate impact alternatives and refining how we use meat so that we avoid wasting it and we avoid um, overeating and malnutrition and obesity. So um, uh, if you're following us online and you're on social media, uh, if you want to write about the series, uh, please use the hashtag Meet Meets, and you can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Mitigation. Okay, so um, I will just introduce our speaker and then mm -hmm. um, uh, give the screen to him. Uh, so uh, just give me uh, one second. So Marc Olivier de Plod. Uh, sorry, uh, if, um, just give me one second. Uh, Marc-Olivier de Plod is a research fellow in sociology at the French National Research Institute for Agriculture, Food and Environment. And he's a member of the Institut de Recherche Interdisciplinaire en Sciences Sociales, a mixed uh, research unit between CNRS and INRA. Uh, and also the Université Paris Dauphin. Uh, his research focuses on the industrialization of agriculture and food uh, using a political science and STS uh, perspective. 
He's studying the transformation of agri-food production systems, and he's interested in the economic, scientific, technical, and political investments that support such transformations. Uh, he's also been examining criticisms, as well as regulations um, that um, are uh, to which these transformations are subject, and how economic players and organizations address such regulations. So um, with that, I'm giving the screen to, oh, it's already taken, uh, by Marc Olivier de Claude. And uh, yes, thank you again for joining us. Okay, hello everybody. So can you see my screen? Is it okay? Yes. Okay, all right. So thank you, Sophia, for offering me the opportunity to present uh, a part of my research on the history of big farming in France. Uh, this research uh, focuses on the, on, the, on the history of pig farming from their emergence in the early 20th century to the current period. And in this presentation, I won't present all of this research, but only a part of it. And I will focus on a, uh, on a, on a key period uh, in this history. I mean the 1970s. Because this period knew a strong concentration of, on, of French pig farms. Um, just uh, some key figures. Uh, for example, uh, during this period, uh, there was a strong, very strong concentration of, of livestock uh, in, in, in farms of, of more than 200 pigs. Uh, for, for example, this, uh, these farms represented only uh, 28 percent of, uh, of, the, of the livestock in, uh, in 1971 and 71% 10 years later. And if you consider the largest, the largest, the largest farms, we can see that uh, in 1981, uh, 1,200 farms and more than 1,000 pigs. And 10 years sooner, there were only 100 farms of, of, of this size. And this evolution was supported by a policy uh, which was supported by the French government which aimed at transforming and concentrating production structures. And this plan was called the plan for the, for the rationalization of pig production. Uh, and the main instrument of this policy consisted of granting subsidies for the construction or the renovation of new livestock facilities. And these subsidies, subsidies uh, allowed a very rapid transformation of pig housing. In, on, in only 10 years, 3.8 million of pig places were built or renovated. So it is just the, the main, uh, the, the main uh, situation. So a few words about uh, my analytical framework. The main questions of this presentation are how was Big farming of scaling achieved, and how did, did it raise new issues, and how these issues were managed, and, and in particular in the economic, environmental, and health fields. Now, to to, um, to answer these questions, um, I will develop the notion of scalability work. Uh, this notion comes from the research of uh, Anna Singh. Uh, from his work on Matsutake uh, mushrooms. Uh, Matsutake's mushrooms, I don't know how you pronounce it. <laughs> uh, and this, uh, this, uh, this notion uh, of scalability refers to the ability of a system to expand without collapsing or weakening. To, to, to quote Sing, scalable projects are those that can expand without changing. And Sing, Take the example of the sugarcane plantations that emerged between the, between the 15th and 17th centuries. And she notes, uh, scalability is not an ordinary feature of nature. Making projects scalable takes a lot of work. Mm. In other words, developing and maintaining a large-scale technical system requires specific scalability work. Mm. But what is this scalability work? I tried to, to characterize this work, and I took inspiration from the from STS research 
by uh, scholars such as Thomas Hughes and John Law, who, uh, who are interested in the work involved in developing large-scale large technical systems, such as, such as electrical distribution networks. In the terms of the 19th or the, or the 20th century, it was the work of Hughes, or ocean navigation in the 15th and 16th centuries, it was the work of John Law. And both of them showed that developing a technical system on a large scale implies solving multiple local problems that can block the expansion of the system as a whole. And both Law and Hughes insisted on the idea that the resolution of these problems is never a purely technical matter. And it implies what Hughes, uh, no, what, uh, sorry, not John Law called an heterogeneous uh, engineering work that combines natural, social, economic, technical, and political elements. Mm -hmm. And John Law adds that this engineering work does not stop once the expansion is achieved, because the elements that have been articulated often prove difficult to tame, I, 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 quote, I quote him, or are difficult to hold in place. So in the case of peak farming, I will present today some aspects of this scalability work. I will, I will, uh, to precise this, I will not analyze the work that was done by farmers in their farms, but the work done by the public authorities and the peak farming organizations to ensure upscaling in farms. So to uh, explore these questions, oops, I used different kinds of sources, uh, mainly specialized, specialized journals in agriculture and pig farming, but also administrative archives and especially local archives and, and uh, archives of the French of the Ministry of Agriculture in France. I also used statistical surveys on pig farms and interviews with people employed by technical and scientific institutions supporting pig farming. And this presentation will be divided into, into two parts. First of all, I will present the policy of the French state for, for intensifying pig farming and its impact in the 70s. Then, in, in the second part, I will examine how the actors of the pig sector manage the upscaling of pig farming and the problems it generated. <clears throat> So just to say a few words about the, the plan for rationalizing pig, pig production in France. So this plan at the time had three aims. The first one, this plan aimed at making French farmers more competitive with Belgian and Dutch farmers in a context of trade liberalization with the, within the common market. It was instituted in 1967 for, for, for pig meat. And the starting point of the plan was a French deficit in the production of pig meat, which was increasing in that time. Second, this plan, this plan aimed at leading pig farmers to have a production that was more regular and less dependent on price fluctuations. The idea was to stabilize the market thanks to a more stable uh, pig production. And lastly, this plan aimed at, at making better profit from the grain which was produced in France. This grain could be, could be used by French pig farmers rather than being exported. And this plan at this time was debated by agricultural organizations, and notably by the French Pig Federation, which was, which was the main organization of French pig farmers. And this organization supported the identification of pig farming, but, and that is a but, its leaders feared the increasing power of feed companies over farmers. At this time, 65% of pig or feed, which was distributed to pigs, came from these uh, feed manufacturers. And the fear was to become integrated, to use the words, by these companies. 
they, they scare losing their independence as, as farmers. So for them, upscaling pig farming was a necessity, but it had to be compatible with the preservation of family farms. In France, it was called, uh, the, the administrative category was two units of human work by farm. And it means two people by, at full time by, by farm. So in the 1970s, this federation made propositions to limit the size of pig facilities. It, you can see, for example, on, on the left, uh, a kind of uh, a brochure uh, uh, which, which was edited by, 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 this, uh, by this federation. And it, this, this, this document contained propositions for controlling the size of pig facilities. So it had to increase, but not too much. So what was the instruments of this, of this plan? The central instrument was the construction of new, larger, and specialized pig buildings. And it, it, could, it could be done by, by, thanks to subsidi subsidies to farmers who are members of producer organizations and thanks to low interest bank loans. And the government expected two things from, from this policy. On the one hand, uh, it, ex it expected uh, that more rational facilities should enable higher livestock performances and a better labor productivity. And on the other hand, farmers who would invest in new facilities would have to produce a regular flow of pigs to pay the bank loans. So investment in pig, in pig housing was viewed as a way of disciplining farmers and of regulating pig, farmer, uh, pig, pig market because they would, they would be disciplined by the debts. And this production model could, can be analyzed as an initial one. You can see the quote on the left and the, vocab and the vocabulary in this quote. It, is a, it, it comes from a note of the, of the French Minister of Agriculture. And this note used the notion of planned production, which is illustrative of, of, a, of a new kind of approach, an approach inspired by industrial production. In some, this policy that uh, relied mainly on technical tools to achieve certain political ends. So we can call it a techno-politics uh, using Gabriel Echt notion. And as we, as, we, as we will see later, this policy was the subject of technical and political debate. But first, what were the results of this policy? These results were remarkable. Um, in, in, in 1981, two thirds of the surface area of livestock buildings had been built or renovated less than, 40, less than 15 years ago. And how did these, these new facilities look like? First of all, they were larger. They were four, 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 four. They were, uh, for example, uh, uh, at, the, at, at the middle of the 1960s, the, the, the medium surface of pig buildings was, was, only, uh, two, uh, was only 26 square meters. In 1981, they were 115 met square meters. And most of all, at, 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 the, at the beginning of this period, most farmers had only one or two buildings. And at the end of this, of this period, many farmers had several buildings, for, for sometimes four, five, six, seven buildings. And these buildings, most of them, they were enclosed buildings at all physiolog physiological stages. Many farmers did not use straw litters anymore. Litters were replaced by slatted floor. And, but uh, the, the, the innovations were, were more limited uh, in the use of automatic systems, such as feeding systems, which remained very rare because they were too expensive for, for many farmers. What must be noted too, it is that these transformations mainly concerned farmers who were members of producer organizations 
and farmers who were located in the in the, in, the, in one region of in France. It is the region of Brittany in the west of France. Uh, and this, this region in France concentrated an even closing share of pig farming. In 1981, uh, it represented 45% of pig livestock compared to, 90, to 29% in 1971. And last thing to say about this, about this plan, it is that uh, government subsidies were significant. Uh, for example, to, to fund some certain buildings, such as flowering buildings, you can, uh, you, this, 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 uh, this subsidies could cover about 30% of the cost of the new buildings. But uh, as, in, uh, as a world, uh, the buildings were mostly funded by low interest bank loans. So uh, many farmers uh, became uh, had, to, had to make uh, important bank loans to, to fund their new buildings. Just to give an example of these transformations, uh, I'm present here two uh, photos illustrating the transformation of so housing. In the 1950s, most of souls in France were raised in free range, or at least in buildings with access to the outside. You have an example of this in the in, in the photo uh, uh, up up the, uh, uh, the 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 slide. But from the 1960s and the 1970s, more and more, more, and more farmers opted to confine souls in buildings. Souls were even permanently deferred or blocked inside individual crates. And these new devices were supposed to make the work of farmers easier, to improve reproductive performances, and to increase stocking density. You can see the, 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 the second picture uh, was uh, in, in, in the same building, you can put a very, very, very big number of stores. And as buildings were expensive, the, most, the more you, you could put uh, animals inside, the, best, the better it was. But, <clears throat> well, just, okay. Um, today, if you see the buildings which, which were built in the 1970s, they look like small facilities. Uh, Today, the current uh, typical French pig farms raise, raise thousands of pigs. And if you compare to other pig farms in the world, you could say that French pig farms are little ones. In the US, you can, you can have farms of, of dozens of thousands of pigs, and in China, uh, hundreds of thousands of pigs. However, raising 200 or 500 pigs in the, in the same farm was a big deal 50 years ago. It was not, it was something new. It represented a major change in pig farming. It, it, can, it can be analyzed as a, as, a, as a scale change. And this upscaling was not an easy thing. It involved dealing with new problems, which are caused or, or exacerbated by the scale change. And pig farmers, but also their neighbors, had to deal with three main issues. I mean, economic issues, animal diseases, and the environmental impacts of the new pig farms. Just on, on, the, on, the, on, the, environmental, on, on the on the issue of environment, even if the French, if the French state funded research on the ways of managing pig farms, manu, Manu, it is a box of the white, for example, it is, a, uh, it is, a, it is a, the same note I, I presented before. And this note explained that uh, the issue of, uh, of Manu was, was, was considered at this time. It was considered at this time, the, the, the state funded, funded the research to solve this issue. But in fact, this issue was dismissed by local administrations. 
the main objective was to develop pig production anyway. So in the 1970s, only the economic and animal health issues drew sustained attention from the public authorities and from agricultural organizations. So let's speak on economic issues. <clears throat> As I said, in spite of state subsidies, farmers had to borrow money to fund their new facilities. And this could be a risky initiative because the price of pig meat was very unstable. It was all the more risky that farmers built specialized facilities. It meant that if the prices dropped, these farmers could not, could not use their building to produce something else. They just had to produce pig, uh, whatever the context, the economic context. And at the beginning of the 70s, most of the expertise on pig facilities came from feed, came from feed manufacturers. This, this com these companies, in addition to supply feed to farmers, these companies offered many services, including advice and support in the, constru in the construction of livestock buildings. But these companies proposed expensive and standardized buildings. Moreover, according to some farmers, their advice was not disinterested. And their aim was first to sell as much feed and services as possible and not to maximize farmers' income. So, considering this issue, farmers' organizations ask to uh, the French chambers of agriculture and to the pig French and to the French Pig Institute, it was a technical institute to, to support uh, pig farming. They ask to the chambers and to the pig institute to develop their own expertise on pig building. You can see, for example, an, an account of, of this story uh, in the box on, on the left. And uh, to to minimize cost, many farmers built their new facilities themselves using lightweight materials such as asbestos cement. And they were, uh, just to give, to give a figure, uh, 30 to 40, 45% of new facilities were built by farmers alone, and 10 to 20% of them were, were, were built with the help of a, of a construction company. Only 30% of, uh, of buildings were built completely by construction company, companies. And farmers were encouraged to build themselves their facilities by agricultural advisors. These advisors promoted the cautious development of livestock farms with minimal construction costs. Emphasis was put on, 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 uh, on building design and on indoor layout, not on automation, which was supposed to be too, too, uh, too, too cost, uh, to cost too, too much money for, for farmers. Another issue was health risk. <clears throat> because concentrated large numbers of animals in confined buildings led to new health problems. The main issue was not the most severe contagious diseases, just such as swine flu, but the most common diseases, like, like linitis or pneumonia, that impacted on farm profitability. For example, uh, slower animal growth, bad feed convention ratios, and so on. And drugs, such as antibiotics, did not work for these diseases, and vaccines were not available or were too expensive. So what could farmers uh, do for, to, to solve this issue? And these issues were recognized both by the leaders of the, of the pig sector and by the Ministry of Agriculture. The Ministry supported a policy aiming at sanitizing the livestock 
population through the production of specific pathogen-free breeding animals. It, is a, it means a, a surgical removal of piglets before birth, and the piglets were raised in germ-free areas. It was a very technical uh, 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 device. And the, this, this, this specific pathogen freeze was, was, was afterwards they were, they were, they were sold to, to, to pig farmers for, to, 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 to populate their farms. Other innovations concern the design of buildings and the running of farms. I, I can mention, for example, improvements in, in the control of indoor atmosphere, for example, through ventilation systems, and most of all, the introduction of batch production, first in finishing facilities and then in following facilities. This new technique was relevant only for large pig farms at this time. It means you, 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 you should have a minimum of uh, 50 sows to, to uh, 50 farming sows to, 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 uh, to, uh, to invest, uh, to, to, to have this kind of organization. And this uh, this organization this, in, in, by, by, by in producing uh, in several batches involved a synchronization of the reproductive of the reproductive cycles of souls. And many of these innovations have been the result of trials carried out by farmers and by technicians who just wanted to solve some problems they met in their farms in a very pragmatic way. These innovations didn't come from the Pig Institute or from the INRA. They, were, they, they came from farmers. <clears throat> this last point leads me to, to, to insist on a, on, a, on, a, on a specific dimension of upscaling. I mean the temporal dimension. The introduction of batch production, which became wide, widespread in France in the 1980s, resulted in a major shift in the temporality of animals and farmers' lives. The biological rhythms of animals were accelerated and made more regular, and farmers' work could now be, plan be planned throughout the year. You have, an example, you have a, a quote in, in, in below which, ex which, 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 which explains that very well. It is a uh, interview I did with a farmer in a scientist who told me if you want to uh, to, to have a meeting with a, with a French, fa French speak farmer, you can you can do it very uh, very easily because they, they know uh, the <laughs> they are planning several months in advance. Um, a big farmer when uh, I, I interviewed uh, two years ago told me, for example, we are civil servants. When he said when he said that to me, we are civil servants, it just meant that. They are that he had regular, regular and predictable work schedules like civil servants in France. I mean, as he, as, as he supposed them to have. In other words, upscaling had not only a special but also a temporal dimension. It implied speeding up production cycles and making them more stable and predictable. And, there is, uh, and, and on this, uh, in, 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 in this slide, I just put uh, an image of a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of, a, of a production planning in a, in a typical French farm with seven batches. So you can see uh, how, how, it, how, it look like, how it looks like. <clears throat> to conclude this, uh, this, this section, a person here a plan. Sorry, uh, Marco Olivier, do you mind going back to the previous slide and just explaining the the image a little bit? Uh, yes. Uh, so this would be that... yeah, like the weeks and the top. Or... Okay. Yeah. Okay. It just mean, uh, for example, I, 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 uh, do you see my uh, my mouse mm -hmm. here? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. So. If you, if you see this this uh, this, uh, this 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 uh, this location mm -hmm. in in in, uh, in pale pink, it is the period of uh, of insemination. Okay. So uh, the the so they have the, like the groups of the, the souls soul. are inseminated just yeah. here, uh -huh, uh -huh. and it, it is the beginning of a new cycles. Uh -huh. uh, it. 
it 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 be, it, it it will begin. Oh, sorry, it will uh, follow just here. Here it is. It is when this uh, mm -hmm. this uh, the, the the piglets are born. Mm -hmm. uh, here they are they are they are, they are just uh, being uh, kept by the souls uh, with with uh, with. Uh, uh, they are fed by the by the by the souls uh, itself. Here they are uh, they are winged, mm -hmm. uh, and at, at, at the end of winning, the souls get inseminated again. Wow. And at the same time, you begin a new a, a, a new batch here. And every few weeks, you, you begin a new batch. So this uh, this kind of organization allows, allows you to have a very regular uh, number of pigs produced at each time, and also it allows you to have a very uh, regular uh, schedule, uh, a very regular plan work planning because you, you will know that, uh, for example, uh, this uh, this week you will have to uh, to uh, I don't know the, num the, the name in English uh, to uh, you, you, it is a nine, the, the, it is it is it is this week where your piglets are born, mm -hmm. and it 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 is it, it will be the, the the main thing you will have to do with following facilities. Mm -hmm. The the two next week, uh, the, the next week you 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 have you 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 will have to to uh, to win the pigs in the, in the in the seventh. Uh, batch and so on. So you you can you can you can you can know for each week what what will be the main task you will have to do, the and main the, specific task you will have to do. Mark Olivier, the and the the gestation time for the pig would be three months, right? Three months, three weeks. Like they uh, the sow will be pregnant for three months, right? Before she gives birth, three months, three weeks, and three days. I think, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Uh, the the, uh, the the period of, of pregnancy it is exactly it is three months, three weeks, and three days. Mm -hmm. And the, this this kind of batch of of, of batch of of, of of planning was a bit uh, on the basis of of the of the of the of the of the, of the of the time of uh, uh, source pregnancy, pregnancy. So if if you followed this uh, this, this this plan, you 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 don't lose time. You you you, are, you we have always some 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 source with 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 uh, we will expect new new piglets of source to be inseminated. So you have no you have no hole in in your in your in your production plan. Yeah, thank you. Sorry to interrupt you, but I thought it would be nice to get the explanation. But you, you can have a, so more complex uh, plan production plans with uh, 10, 10, 10 batches or, tw or or even twenty batches for so for the largest pig farms. But the, this one was the most popular in the in the nineteen in the nineteen seventies and nineteen eighties because it was um, considered as as adapted to to medium sized pig farms. And in the in the period where well, you don't you don't have to win pigs or don't you don't have to uh, uh, new new piglets to be born, you, you had you had more time to to, to, to go work on, on your fields and to or to do to, to, to or to do other, other, other things in the farm. So uh, just to conclude this section, I should show you a plan of a state-of-the-art piggy, piggery built in the 1970s. It was a huge uh, pig farm at that time. Uh, it, could, uh, it could welcome about uh, 1,000, uh, no, sorry, not, uh, 180 sows for a total of 2,000 pigs. It was a very big farm at, for, for, at this time. And this building was divided in four uh, physiological, physi physi physiological stages uh, uh, in, on the on the left it was uh, it was the places for uh, following for for for, uh, for gestating uh, souls 
here it was the, the, here it was the, the, the rooms for uh, for souls with uh, with their piglets. Here it was the place the places for for piglets who, who were wind just as to, uh, just just as, just just uh, we, 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 were, we, we were given artificial feed uh, and and, last, and lastly here it was the uh, the finish the finishing facilities so the, the place to uh, for for the older pigs so um, what you can see that there were also uh, several independent rooms at each stage to allow uh, batch production. So you are, you are, for example, in the in the in, in this in, at this stage, you are you had four rooms for each uh, for each uh, batch. And the this separation of batches was a way to uh, limit uh, health risk because if you had, uh, for example, a disease in this batch. You could expect that it, it, it will not contaminate the batch air. So what you can see in this in this in, in this map, uh, it is um, uh, it is both a special it is both the special and temporal uh, dimension of upscaling. Upscaling implies the temporal organization of space. As they grew older, pigs circulated from the left from the, from the left uh, side to the right side of the building. So to conclude, <clears throat> first, I showed that the French government promoted an upscaling of pig farming while moderating its pace and intensity. This policy was supported by several pig farmers' uh, organizations, including the National Pig Federation. And for this federation, the preservation of the family farm was a major stake, but they were also economic and sanitary stakes. What we can say in the, uh, was the second point I would like to underscore, it is that upscaling and also the the geographical concentration of pig farming, especially in Brittany, uh, generated new kinds of fragilities, notably regarding uh, animal health. And these fragilities led to the development of technical and organizational device systems that were as isolated as possible. And we can, we can analyze it as the beginning of what we call today biosecurity, uh, which is which is which is, a, which is today a major current of industrial pig farms and of most industrial pig most uh, uh, industrial animal farms more generally. So I, uh, I will uh, stop here. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marc Olivier. Uh, I propose we have a ten minute break. And then we return for questions and discussions at uh, quarter past four. Uh, so thank you very much for this uh, fascinating presentation, uh, Marc Olivier, and uh, see you in 10 minutes. See you yeah. all in 10 minutes. All right. So thanks again for joining us for the discussion. Uh, we already have a couple of questions, one from Mina, Kanerva, and Helene here. And um, maybe I'll invite Mina to ask her question uh, herself, if that's okay, Mina. Um, yeah, okay. Um, thanks for the presentation, uh, really interesting. Um, I was just wondering, because this fast, um, or, or this upscaling, which to me seems like industrialization of the pig farming in, in France, um, that it must have meant a huge decrease for the animal welfare for the pigs. So was there any resistance from the farmers on this or any public discussion on, on that issue? Mm -hmm. yes, Especially uh, because it was so fast. Yes, of course. Uh, yes, you, in, in the, as a matter of fact, it, it was a, it, this, uh, this transformation meant uh, a very... Uh, a big, huge, uh, huge uh, de deterioration in, in the welfare, in the welfare of pigs. Uh, sure, um, but in France at this time, uh, 
the issue was not uh, was not debated in, in in public arenas. I mean that uh, in France at this time there were not not at all uh, associations of uh, for animal welfare, just as they were in uh, in Great Britain, for example. And uh, these associations, some of them existed, but they didn't consider at all. Uh, uh, pig farming or uh, the, the welfare of animals raised in, in farms. Uh, it, was not, it was not an issue. They, they, they were more about the issue of, uh, of animals uh, who, are, uh, who are living with, uh, with, with, uh, with people in the, in the houses, but, uh, but not in farms. So uh, they, were, they were not at all, in, they, were, they, they, they were not uh, large, many contestations on the issue in France. The, the main the main criticisms which emerged in the end of the 70s it was the issue of of the environment because uh, the the development of these pig farms uh, generated new uh, new uh, pollutions and new uh, uh, new, new uh, other uh, issues for the people living uh, uh, near the near the near, near the pig farms but they didn't question the, the issue of welfare. And uh, among, among farmers, uh, I, don't, I don't have the, the answer. Um, what, what I could say, it is that, in fact, uh, the, most of farmers adopted the new techniques. So uh, perhaps some of, some of them uh, uh, resist it, but, of, 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 of kept uh, raising, raising the animals in more uh, in, 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 in less industrialized ways, but uh, it, it remained uh, it was a minor part of farmers. For example, uh, in 1991, in, the, in, the, no, in, the, in 2001, there was a, an European directive uh, which uh, Obliged the farmers to raise their sows, their pregnant sows, in group. In group, and at this time, most farmers in France uh, raised the farms, raised their sows in crates, in individual, in individual crates. But there remained some farmers who raised their sows in group. There were not too many farmers, but some of them uh, still did it. Um, so. Perhaps we can. I don't. I don't. I, don't, I, I did not interview this farmer, so I don't know uh, why they, they did this choice. Uh, if it was because they, they, they felt more comfortable working in, the, in this way, uh, for example, the the or if, or, or for the animals or for themselves, or of if they didn't just have the, the money to build uh, to build the new facilities. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't have the the, the, the explanations for this. But it is sure that uh, even if, if this industrialized way of producing pigs became dominant in France at, 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 in the 70s, there remained some farmers who uh, kept uh, raising pigs uh, outdoor, or, but um, it was very rare. And, in, and just to add a, to add a, uh, a, 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 a little point, uh, in, for example, in the, in the 1980s, some farmers made the choice of raising sows uh, in free ranch uh, outside. But in fact, the, 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 there were some, uh, some papers uh, from, 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 pig, uh, from, the, from the Pig Institute or from the Chambers of Agriculture about these farmers. And they say that these farmers did this choice not for welfare reasons, but only because uh, it Investing in farming facilities, it was very expensive. So uh, raising uh, sows outside, it was a way of beginning of, of, of beginning pig farming, and to to, to beginning uh, making money and to win, and, and by this by this way, if, if if they succeeded, they could invest later in 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 in, uh, in buildings, and many of them did it. <laughs> So, uh, the, the, wow, the, it's the, impressive, the, yeah. The, 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 yeah, the, the I also, sorry <laughs> to interrupt, I'm like cutting in, but like, I was also wondering, like Mina here about, mm -hmm. you know, the, how the farmers receive that, especially because you said, you mentioned a new kind of farmer, 
coming in here or a new so that the kind of expansion is coming with a new kind of sort of professional um, ethos perhaps, or, you know, this mm. kind of making of the new professional. So I was also wondering if like uh, that was the farmer adapting to new skills or new values, mm. or were there people who weren't farmers before coming into this field of farming? I think you mentioned that earlier in our discussion before we started the, the webinar. So, um, so I'm wondering about sort of a follow up on Mina's question about animal welfare, or at least like how the farmers would define this themselves and sort of, I, I imagine perhaps this is not in your research questions, but like this is something we've been uh, studying in mitigation, how regenerative uh, farmers uh, in some ways also get this emotional resilience through the connection with the animals and through the connection with the land. And so, uh, and since the mental health of farmers is an issue these days uh, or has been for a long time. Um, yeah, I was also wondering about uh, this transition and how it affected uh, what was meaningful work or like how farmers define uh, themselves uh, uh, it, it, uh, through this work, you know, was it, you know, a matter of uh, making money more or something else? Yes, sorry, I totally cut uh, the line because Helena also had a question. Uh, Helena, you wanna also ask your question now? Yeah, no, actually I was uh, going to follow up on, on what you were saying. Okay, uh, great, thanks. Because my first question in writing was about the statistics, and I'm still interested in that. But I, I just wanted to, um, to 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 jump on what you were saying. I was raised in Brittany in the 1970s, so oh. I've been in this envi environment of uh, nuisance, of flurry, uh, and and uh, demonstrations of farmers, etc. So uh, I consider myself part of this uh, ecosystem. But at the same time, I really found it so fascinating to listen to you because uh, this was something that was happening in the hiding. We, this is the first time I get into the pig, pig production facility and this is really enlightening. And so thank you so much for this presentation. But my question was exactly on what you were uh, saying, Sophia. Um, you, you were defining uh, the, the expansion of a system after Singh's definition that it's until the system collapses. But, but living in that expansion time, I felt that there were so many instances of collapsing where people were committing suicide, where, well, we talked already about the animal welfare, but there were so many... Uh, uh, destructions of families and and you, you couldn't live around the, those farms so people who had to leave etc so um what was the cost of this the social cost the human cost the uh, mental cost of this expansion is that something that you study mm -hmm. okay hello mm -hmm. uh, just to uh, to answer there, there are many questions so i, I just to, to uh, uh, to list several points, uh, just the, the, the little point on, on statistics. Uh, in, uh, in fact, uh, at, the, at the end of the, in 1980, uh, just just to say Brittany, to everyone, this is in the Q and A. So uh, the question of Elena in the Q and A uh, of the 45 percent of pig farmers in Brittany in 81 versus 29 in 71, whether that figure pertains to pig farming in France in general, or 45% of farmers in Brittany um, going into pig farming, okay. right? So, um, yes, um, in, in fact, it was 55% uh, of pig farming in Brittany, and today it is about 60% uh, percent, uh, in, this, uh, in, this, in this region. So it is, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, the region of, of pig farms. But also of poultry farms and of and of, and of uh, uh, milk farms. It is a very it is a region of uh, there are many many uh, very industrialized uh, animal farms. Um, alors, so to answer the different questions, uh, perhaps uh, the, the questions of Sophia first. Uh, it is uh, what what was the what, what the main uh, a main uh, event, uh, um, 
claim of, uh, of, uh, of farmers politicians at this time was improving both uh, working conditions of farmers and to improve their, uh, their, their, uh, their, 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 their um, uh, the money they earned from from the, from, the, from from their farm, and uh, in fact, all these uh, all these new uh, all these new all these new facilities, the new techniques, were praised as a way to improve working conditions. For example, you didn't have to uh, to bring litter to uh, to pigs; you have just uh, manual uh, evacuated uh, automatically in the in the, in the slatted floors. You didn't have to bring food because you had automatic uh, feeders to bring food. So it, it was considered as a way to improve working conditions, and uh, it was it was presented as a way to uh, to improve the, the, the money they did because uh, they, 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 they they could uh, work alone on larger in larger farms. But uh, as a matter of fact, it didn't happen in this way because. Uh, uh, the fact is that uh, farmers had to invest a lot of money uh, to, to get these new facilities and they had to, to build uh, many, many uh, inputs uh, to, uh, to, uh, to other companies. Uh, first of all, uh, feed, feed for the animals because if you had such huge farms, you couldn't uh, produce all the feed in your own farms. And this one, uh, it, was a, a, it is something which, which is very important because in, in Brittany, especially in Brittany, uh, many farmers had very little farms. Uh, and if they if he wanted to develop their, uh, their farm, they couldn't produce more sales or more, uh, more uh, vegetables or things like that. The, the only way they had to develop the economic activity of our farm was to uh, develop in, industrial uh, farming, uh, uh, animal farming. And, uh, some of them did it in poultry, some of us in, in, in pig, uh, in, in pig uh, breeding. And um, uh, the, the result of this, it is that some farmers invested in new facilities, they, 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 they developed their farm, but they couldn't produce the feed for the pigs, so they had to, to buy it uh, outside. And it was, um, if it was, um, it involved a new kind of fragility for these farmers because they 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 they, 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 are, they are new debts, and they have to, they have to pay uh, for, for 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 the feed for the other, other services they 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 they, they bought for for the pigs, and the context at this time and it is still, it, it is it is always true today, it is uh, a market with very unstable prices. There are very regular crises. Uh, in pig production, it means that the drop, the, the prices drop, and um, if you don't have enough money, you, you can you 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 go bankrupt. bankrupt. Mm. And uh, if you interview uh, farmers today or, uh, or um, people working in uh, executives of French pig cooperatives, they will tell you that crisis is something normal and then. And even something sound. I mean that they consider the crisis is a way to eliminate the uh, the, more, the less performant farmers. So the, 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 the so the better we, we stay uh, we, 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 we stay we, we still stay in business and the others will be eliminated. So they, but no, it, is, it is a part of the discourse. Another part is also that they they put in place some uh, uh, devices. To uh, help farmers to uh, to uh, to live with crises. For example, uh, some uh, some um, some producer rejections, and with the help of the, of the French government, put in place some. Uh, I don't know how to say, say it in English, but it was a kind of uh, of insurance. I mean, uh, when the prices were low. Uh, they, 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 they paid the, the pigs at, at a higher price, and, the, when the, and, and when the prices of the pigs uh, got higher, they, they, they paid the pig at, the, at a lower price. So it was a way of, uh, of stabilizing the prices of pigs and to avoid uh, 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 diffi financial difficulties in farms. So there was different ways uh, which were which were organized by the by the cooperatives to uh, 
to limit the impact of crises on farmers. But it, the, the, mm -hmm. it, it, there's a kind of ambivalence kind of on, on this subject because they didn't want to support the, what they considered the, the bad farmers, the, the farmers who had very little farm, too, too little farms, who didn't uh, want to invest in new facilities. Mm -hmm. But they also need, they, they need farmers, so they couldn't, they had to support also some farmers, if, you, if, if to have enough uh, to have enough pig produced in their cooperative, so um, it means that uh, there, there is a, a kind of uh, of balance between supporting farmers and not supporting them in, in cooperatives. Um, but the so, question uh, about yeah, the moral and social cost. Yes, uh, the transformation. I didn't. Um, um, I think to to answer this question, we we'll need to make some interviews with uh, with farmers uh, at this time, and especially with farmers uh, who would have uh, 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 would have abandoned pig farming uh, at this time. Um, I didn't, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, what, what I can say that uh, it is that uh, when this kind of industrialized pig farming developed in France, there was a strong, uh, 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 the, the, the French government and the, and the, and the, and the pig farmers, the Russians, uh, spoke at this time, they spoke about what happened in the poultry sector. Because in France, the poultry sector there had been a very, very strong, very strong crisis in the beginning of the 60s. Uh, and it was due to the fact that uh, many poultry farmers were integrated by uh, feed companies. And uh, they take many, many, uh, many economic risks at this time. So we, we, in the case of pig farming, the, the cooperatives at this time, the Ministry of Agriculture, they tried in the same time to uh, to to uh, to, uh, to select the new farmers they, they wanted to support, mm -hmm. and, and and at the same time they they they, 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 they tried to uh, to introduce some mechanisms to protect them from crisis, mm -hmm. and uh, it is true that uh, uh, when I said that. Uh, most of the subsidies, subsidies benefited, uh, all of them benefited to farmers who are, mem who are members of producer organizations. It means that the other ones, the farmers who are not members of producer organizations, did, uh, did not get anything. So all these people were eliminated from pig production. Mm -hmm. And the model was to promote a specialization in pig production. Okay, uh, I, I just want to say that we have about uh, 15 minutes. So I wanted okay. to have some space for uh, others to also raise questions. Uh, Marco Louis, if you wanna wrap up this uh, answer. If you're okay. ready or to take some more questions. Yes, I am ready. No, okay. Yes, I think Kate has a question. Yeah, I'm just like others, I'm really, I, I'm really affected by the the decade of change that seems really rapid, and I'm really curious about um, the impact that it had intergenerationally on families. Um, and and was there stress? I mean, obviously, we all have you know periods of nostalgia for things, but it seems to me that farmers were kept so busy during this time just to survive. I wonder if their experience was so compressed that they didn't have time to really think about those things or, or, or were there conflicts that were raised and did whole families relocate um, because of this? Mm. Um, in fact, uh, if, you, um, uh, if you consider this period, we, we can say that there, there were different styles of industrialization. 
there was not there was not just one model. I think in my presentation, as I, 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 I presented things in a simplified way. Uh, for example, I will just present two uh, two uh, two another way of, uh, of industrializing pig farming at this time. Um, in the very west of uh, Brittany, in the in the in in a, in a place which is called Finisterre, there were there were some farmers uh, who, who presented themselves as liberal farmers, and the the case of these farmers is interesting because they they presented, they presented themselves as farmers who uh, wanted to develop very very huge farms, and it is and there, there were some. Um, some studies of economists uh, on, on, uh, in, the, in the 70s about, about, this, about these farmers. And we knew, we knew some things about them. And they, um, the, so they developed very, 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 very fastly our farms. Uh, most, of, most of them uh, by, uh, cost, by building themselves, their buildings, or, or, or by, using the, or by uh, making them built by their employees. And, um, The, the model was the model of specialization. It means that they produced only they only produce pigs, not anything else. And uh, they, they try to produce high volumes to get better conditions for feed. For, for, for when, when, when they have to when they have to buy feed, they high, they, they bought large volumes of feed so they could have, they could have uh, lower prices. But uh, it is one way of uh, of industrialization. In uh, in other parts of Brittany, and especially in in, in other in, in, in other uh, place of Brittany, for example, in the in the Côte d'Armor, it was a different model because uh, French pig farmers, uh, pig farmers uh, were a bit reluctant in specialization in pig farming because they considered they considered it was too it was too risky, and many farmers uh, go um, still uh, raised cows, for example, to, to produce milk. And they 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 they, uh, they 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 wanted to uh, to still uh, to 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 invest in pig production, but not to put all their eggs in the same basket. I don't know this expression in English, but it it is it is uh, it is this, this idea. And it is true that this uh, this these two styles of uh, of, uh, of of modernizing pig farming, there were strong conflicts. In the in the inside the pig sector, for example, the the the, the pig uh, the, the 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 farmers the liberal farmers in the in, in the in the in the west of Brittany, they they, they ask, for example, that the, the subsidies should not be limited uh, to uh, to uh, to to fund uh, uh, to uh, a limited number of pigs. Uh, I mean that they considered the, the best way to to, uh, to develop pig farming was to uh, to develop low interest loans, and uh, but uh, and the, for example, and the, and the, and the farmers uh, wanted to 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 do uh, to do pig farming, but also to do other kinds of uh, of, uh, of agriculture. I mean, for example, uh, raising cows. They wanted to limit the subsidies. The subsidize to favor medium-sized farms. So, and <laughs> these conflicts, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they, they still exist today. <laughs> it is very, very and uh, there is very. Uh, I, uh, in fact, there is other uh, aspects of this of these conflicts in uh, in uh, inside the, the pig sector, but. Uh, it, I, I think we can, we can but it, 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 it is at this time, for this moment, it is just uh, an hypothesis because I, 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 can, I, can, I can't prove it. But I think we can rely uh, the, the one explanation of this. It is uh, the structure of, uh, of land uh, uh, in, these different in these different regions of Brittany. In the, in the west of Brittany, some farmers uh, were very, uh, before uh, the development of pig farming were large farmers. They, some of them raised horses, for example, so they, they had money and they could invest very quickly in new facilities. But on the on the on the east in the east of Brittany, farmers were were, were poorer. 
they are less money, they are less land, and they uh, and they, uh, they, they they were more reluctant in the, in, uh, in 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 investing uh, large amounts of money to uh, in in one in just one speculation. Mm. I, but, uh, I don't think you answered the question, uh, Marco Olivier. <laughs> about the family intergenerational impacts but you know you have we have uh, put a lot of questions about you know like the kind of social emotional cost of all this that maybe that's a new research project for you <laughs> yeah but uh, it's more you know i feel like your your approach is more you know from the sort of like economic and like technological side of it and I think yes. uh, a lot of the questions you're getting here is like more of the social, psychological, you know, like this kind of, yes. uh, you know, that type of impact, which I think is super interesting. I mean, and of course they are connected, right? Uh, but I think uh, Silvia maybe has a point, a question. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you, Marc Olivier, for the presentation. It was very interesting to listen about uh, this uh, um, history of, in France in pig farming. And um, I, I, I have kind of two questions in one, maybe. <laughs> uh, so it's connected to this expansion that you is amazing in 10 years, how much the production uh, of pigs increased, like uh, from 1971 to 1981. I think was 26% or 43% or something, if I remember well in the, from the pictures of your slides. And I'm wondering what happened, suddenly the market was full of pork. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the, the consumption side, you know, because they didn't have so much pork, so much uh, production of this type of food, let's say. And in 10 years, the market was full of these products and the pork, the pigs, as we know, everything can be used, can be eaten. So in this uh, almost uh, uh, in ten, uh, this increase that happened in such a short time, how the, the, the people, the consumers also, mm -hmm. so I know that you've been talking about production and I'm, I'm asking again, maybe other question a bit on the side of your presentation, but mm -hmm. uh, even even though it's a bit maybe on the side, it's somehow connected because you know also the market, as you were saying, most of these buildings were subsidized or uh, from the bank loans. Mm -hmm. So then the prices of the meat, in this case of the pork, had to be really low, right? And then again, the farmers were not able to get profit enough to keep their business, which is demanding and demanding more and more loans they had to ask for the bank. Mm. So then this was a vicious cycle. So this this question of suddenly the consumption, what, what happened? You know, what happened? Suddenly we have all this pork, <laughs> and mm. which we didn't have. So people are eating something. So also my question is what this was replacing, you know, this production, this expansion of production of pig uh, was replacing what as well, which was totally gone. And with this massive amount of pork all over the places. Mm. Yeah. Thank okay. you again. Okay. Thank you for your question. Uh, just a point about the emotional impact of uh, of essential impact of these of these changes. I, there is another person, uh, an historian, uh, French historian, a young French historian, who, who is working on this on, on this subject because she she's a, she's she's a doctor of uh, she's a she's a PhD student and she's a doctor of uh, of, of, of pig farmers. Of the pig farmer, and she's doing field work with uh, all the farmers uh, in Brittany. And I think this uh, 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 her PhD thesis will uh, give answers to, to, to this kind of question because it is more uh, uh, from it is a more uh, uh, study. Uh, it, is, it is focused on the on the, on the stories of farmers at, at this time, and it is not my work uh, because I, I I work more on. The, Thank you, Mark on Olivier. The Okay. We can invite so her answer, next answer semester. On the last question, <laughs> uh, in fact, the, 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 in this time in the 70s, pig production be, became more concentrated, but as well, did not, the, the volume of, of pig meat produced in France, in France did not increase because many farms disappeared. Uh, what, what, what I think what is, what is important it is that in the 60s, many, many farms had just one, two, or less than 10 pigs. And all these farms disappeared. 
Uh, I, don't, I don't remember the exact figure, but uh, I think that in the uh, I, 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 I can I, I could find it, but at, at, in the in the in the in the fifties, more than half of farms in France had pigs. <laughs> so, but not too not too many, perhaps some many, many often just one pig or two pigs or five pigs, but not too many. But many many farms had pigs, and it all that disappeared in in the in the, in the seventies. So the, what happened? It is that the, the, there was the concentration of pig farming, but not the production of more meat. <laughs> so there was not a, a consumption issue. And um, at, the, at, the, at the beginning of 1980s, France, France still needed to, uh, importations from abroad uh, of, of pig meat. They, they, the French producers did not produce enough pig for French consumers. So uh, there was not. There was not an issue of uh, for the market, but sorry, Michael, Olivier, they needed more. <laughs> sorry, this is maybe provocative from my side, mm -hmm. and I apologize yeah. for it. You said that they needed to import uh, more pork. They needed, I mean, these things of you know the market of what they need, particularly in this time of the of the history as you say that was all this competition between countries and all this uh, great trade agreements between countries to uh, flow, flow the products so they needed por more pork and what they were producing was not enough this is i'm not sure about if they really need it but uh, yeah, that's the narrative that's the narrative mm. yes yes it is true that the when when we, when we speak about the pig market it is a it was a european pig market so the, the French producers were in competition with, uh, with producers from Germany, from, uh, from, from, from the Netherlands, from, 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 from Belgium. And um, what happened at this time, I didn't speak about that because it is another aspect of the story. There was a strong uh, evolution in the trading of pigs. Uh, and the, this period saw the, the development of producer organizations. Who concentrate and this organization concentrated the trading of pigs and the, the development of bigger pig farms and of the batch production. Uh, the result of this was to, uh, to produce uh, more, enfin, more, more uh, pre, enfin, previsible uh, volumes of pigs. Uh, and it was, it, it, it could be this producer organizations. Could uh, sell them at a more competitive prices to uh, to uh, to slaughterhouses or to uh, or to, or to um, uh, 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 <laughs> factories producing uh, sausages or these things like that. Um, and um, but it is uh, fine. It, but it is it is it's fine. fine. Uh, I, it is a, a, a point of, of, of my of my research today. I, I must uh, I must uh, I must uh, uh, work on because the the pig market is 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 uh, is, is very com is, a, is a complex one uh, because uh, the pig market you, you don't sell uh, uh, pig pigs pigs uh, in. Uh, uh, you, you just sell you, you sell and, 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 uh, in Europe and, uh, and abroad uh, outside Europe you, you sell just pieces pieces of meat. <laughs> and for example, uh, France produces uh, many uh, many uh, many parts of pigs that France consumers don't like. <laughs> so they 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 they, 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 ex they export it to uh, to uh, to, uh, to another. European countries or to, or to or to Asia and so on, and on, on the contrary, some some there are some some parts of pigs that French producers don't produce in 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 uh, in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in in large country in in uh, quantities which are which are enough for 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 for, 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 for factories producing ham or sausages or things like that. And they, they, that, they had to import uh, arms, for example, uh, from, from, the, from, from, from abroad. Uh, so the, the model of which was promoted in this time 
it was just a model of reducing cost because they considered, and this, and this, and this is the case still today for many, many uh, farmers and producer organizations, they consider that they are, they are working in a, in a very competitive market. Mm. So the only way to, uh, to survive this market is to produce at very, very low costs. Uh, oh. Sorry. Yeah, yes. to, to, I think we have to wrap up, but just to wonder again. So is it that then, you know, we transition to the rationalized, you know, modern model, mm -hmm. which is bad for animal welfare. It has environmental impacts. It has, you know, psychological probably impacts, etc. And you're not even producing more, you're not producing more Me or maybe eventually you are, but like, uh yeah and and people are in debt to buy this building so it seems like it's actually more expensive for the farmers to modernize it seems like this is a yeah very problematic narrative on some level um uh but uh, so that does this actually is this cost efficient of course, if we account for the cost on the environment, et cetera, this is another sort of issue, uh, this kind of true cost accounting and environmental, um, what are called uh, environmental resources um, mm -hmm. to monetize that and impacts on that. But did it become more cost effective at some point, mm -hmm. Marco Luia? Uh, it is, is, a, or, it is a not question. an open question. It is, it is a very controversial question because <laughs> if, you, <laughs> if you if you interview some uh, some farmers today, we see that we, we, we tell you that they are, they are the most cost-effective producers because they they, they need a very, they, to produce one ki one kilogram of meat. They uh, they need uh, fewer feed than, uh, for example, uh, organic uh, farmers. <laughs> But it is a very uh, it is a very controversial argument uh, mm -hmm. because uh, it, it it doesn't take into account the, the environmental impact of, uh, of, of, our, of, of 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 and the ethical impact of of of, of, of our methods. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, today uh, I would say because I, another part of my research is of my research is it is about the development of. Uh, of, uh, I, I would say that uh, new kinds of quality products in pig farming. And uh, today there is a, a stronger differentiation uh, among pig farmers. And uh, the fact is that some farmers, uh, uh, they, they, they obtain some, uh, some, some contracts uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, supermarkets or with uh, factories who enable them to have better prices. And um, these, these farmers, they, it's, it's okay for them. They, uh, some, uh, they, 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 some of them have even some contracts which will guarantees on prices. So they are, they are protected against uh, prices fluctuations. But it is a uh, it is an elite. It is uh, very few farmers who, uh, who have su such uh, guarantees, and the m most of most of the others, they, they just have to produce uh, pig meat, uh, basic pig meat, and they are very exposed to uh, to the to the market and to, the, and to prices fluctuations. And today, the the market uh, has become much more unstable. Uh, because um, um, a bigger part of uh, European pig production is exported uh, outside Europe, especially, especially in, in China. And, um, and the, the other fact it is that the, for during a long time, the, the price of feed was very low and stable. Uh, during all the, the 80s and the 90s, the, the pig production expanded a lot in France because uh, Big, uh, the, 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 the cost of feed was very, very low. And uh, it, the, today, uh, it is not the case. And the, 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 the very strong instability and, 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 feed, uh, and, and feed prices. So there is both an instability on, pre, on price, uh, on the price on, uh, on feed and, 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 and in the price of, of pig meat. 
And the, comp the, the, uh, the effect of these two kinds of instabilities uh, make uh, pig farming much more risky uh, in an economic way for, 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 for younger, uh, for, 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 for many farmers. And the consequence of this, it is, uh, well, it is a classic story, but uh, it is uh, an ever increasing concentration of, uh, of pig farms because uh, the few farmers who, uh, who, uh, who have the better contracts uh, are, are, the, are the only farmers who have, who have the money to, uh, to, uh, to buy the, uh, the other farms when, uh, when people go, go retired or, or when, they go, when they go bankrupt. So yeah, just to finish up, I oh sorry, Sylvia, you had a point. No, I was just saying maybe. Is a big issue. <laughs> yes, <I know. laughs> uh, maybe yes. maybe we should just uh, you know give up of meat production. <laughs> mm. <laughs> if it's so complicated, it's so difficult, even for the ones that are trying to make their life. Maybe we should just give up of that. I don't know. Seems that we are insisting in something that is just benefiting just a very small group. And uh, no one in the big the, the big population side, the animals are not actually benefit. So maybe we should just give up on, on that in this uh, production of uh, industrial production of meat. This is just a, a suggestion, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I see also a comment from Helena. I don't know if you want to say it about environmental pollution. Yes, no, I was just uh, thinking that we haven't even touched upon the, the very uh, complicated issue of green algae in the sea and, and the pollution of, of rivers all around Brittany and France, of course. So, and this is something that uh, is stigmatizing, stigmatizing uh, farmers and they are in a defensive position because they feel accused and then it's, it's really uh, something that is uh, not a very ugly uh, debate. And so it's very sad for the farmers as well. Yes, uh, in the case of France, it was in fact the first controversy about pig farming in the 19, uh, at the end of the 1970s, it was about uh, uh, not sea pollution, but rivers uh, pollution uh, in Brittany, uh, because uh, the, the, it was a problem of, uh, of nitrates, of, uh, of, uh, in, um, and the, um, it was the, the issue of many, many uh, 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 catchments for drinking waters for, for, for drinking water which were polluted and which could not be used anymore for uh, for, for the population and uh, well, in fact I, I, I made it I know yeah. Marc Olivier you have to catch a train you told me so oh, it's okay just one minute or two but uh, okay yeah just I don't want you to yeah in fact I, I made the research about this point of, 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 it's my first uh, research in Brittany. I, I, I make research about the, the um, uh, um, an infraction uh, against European law about the, about the, about the European directive about the quality of water, and the, and the it was the issue was the pollution of water by uh, by nitrates. And uh, I have I, I the paper which is going. I, I write a paper about this, and it is this paper is maybe probably be uh, published in the uh, before the end of the year. Yes. But uh, I think several people uh, worked on this issue uh, about pollution. And what I wanted to do in my research was to uh, to go inside uh, farm and inside buildings uh, to uh, to understand how the the, the technical systems were built uh, from the from the inside, uh, and not just about the consequences about uh, uh, of this uh, new kind of uh, production methods. So it is why when I begin uh, when I began my research, I um, I chose to to work about the on on um, on, on big buildings uh, because I, I uh, it was a way of. Um, of understanding many aspects of uh, of pig production, uh, yeah, um, in the state of economic aspect, but also technical aspect of the. But it, of, I mean, of, also of, just the image, research. you know, of all the rooms that you have and the crates and the divisions between the animals is just like so powerful to just see that, you know, see that transition, see that 
way of uh, working or um, kind of, you know, producing animals. Um, yeah, and this kind of confinement and also from confining uh whatever might spread you know between the different batches I, I mean you see so many ways of like disciplining controlling you know trying to uh sort of rationalize as you said the system and the slits of course slitted floors where the excrement will go and be collected and then you know end up in a river <laughs> or like polluting the water is i mean i think it's very powerful to see the architecture, this kind of technology and how it's uh, uh, operating here. So yeah, should any final remarks or reflections or uh, maybe now we thank uh, again, Marc Olivier for this wonderful sure. talk and the discussion and for taking thank all our challenges, much. you know, <laughs> And uh, yeah, thank you so much. And we're looking forward to the next time you're here. Uh, our next seminar, at least the planned one is for 24th of May, uh, which is some time. So I'm thinking maybe one of us in mitigation could present in between some of our research. So uh, keep, uh, you know, keep an eye out on our website and Twitter and Facebook, and we'll announce our next uh webinar soon uh and the 24th of may it's rebecca um a banas martin um who is going to talk about uh, lamb after easter but we're still gonna talk about loving lamb so uh i'll see you everyone soon and thanks again mm -hmm. marco olivier okay thank you very much have a good trip <laughs> there's a lot of research, a lot of research to do again uh, on this subject uh, I, i'm very conscious of that <laughs> yes no it's great bye-bye <laughs>